and I've driven all over town to look for the damn thing. Hello, I'm MC Toon, and this video is by Dare Ick uh, from TikTok, and I gotta say, I think I know his real name. But uh, if you are drinking something hot, coffee, tea, some some beverage, please put it down right now. Don't drink it. I don't want you spitting it out on the screen. Okay, so I have an unbelievable update for you guys on the sun and the moon. You ready to see it? There's the sun, but when you look around, and I've driven all over town to look for the damn thing, but the moon disappeared. <laughs> I warned you. It disappeared. And that ain't possible on a globe or a flat earth. It is nowhere to be found. I have literally driven all over town and this damn thing is gone. It is gone, sun, no moon. Somebody maybe should tell Derek that the moon sets and about half of the day you cannot see it. And by day, I don't mean daytime, I mean 24, oh, he won't get it. If that is not a glitch in the matrix, I don't know what is. In one hour's time, the moon completely left the sky when it was directly above me an hour ago. You can tell, because you can see his breath, that he doesn't live near the tropics. He's in Oregon. It's cold. The moon was not directly overhead. You guys want to pretend like this world is material and not energetic, not a matrix. But then these glitches can't be explained on either model, and you guys don't see that. It is gone. Nowhere to be found. I drove everywhere. I noticed this about 15 minutes ago, and I've been driving around trying to find it. But it's gone. I'm going to show you behind the building. So nobody thinks I'm trying to pull one over you. Are you guys ready to start looking for the truth? Are you ready to leave the globe model behind? Because this is impossible to have happened. The moon disappeared. It just vanished. What's wrong with him? Stop doing heroin! I don't know why he thought he needed to drive around town or go behind the building to check for the moon. He's very confused. That's not the only time that he's been confused about the moon. Here's another one. Hey, Globe Earthers, I want to see you explain this one. We got the moon halfway out right here, and then we've got the sun out right here. Okay. So, Globe Earthers, explain why that shadow stays the same all day while the sun and the moon both move. If the Earth is rotating and the moon is rotating around the Earth and the sun is stationary, as the location changes of the moon in correlation with the sun, that shadow will change. But it doesn't. It stays the same all day long because your theories are bull crap. May I ask you a personal question? All right. Have you ever been tested for idiocy? Yeah, Derek, the phases of the moon are not caused by the Earth's shadow. That would be eclipses, something you also can't explain for Flat Earth. Uh, sadly, it is a common misconception that phases are related to Earth casting a shadow on the moon. But, Derek, if you are going to be debunking all of science and trying to be smarter than all scientists ever, you should at least get it right. Um, I have another one from Derek. I'll come back to later, but first, Chatbox Travels. All right, before Chatbox Travels, I know you're wondering, where did all this glorious hair come from, and why did Conspiracy Cats lose that smashing accent? He gave me this channel. He wasn't doing stuff on it anymore. He's over on the new channel, Culture Cats. Link in the description. Be sure to con uh, subscribe to him there. Um... You may, you may notice that there are still some space commas. I can't say space commas like cats can. So I have a voice actor that I specifically asked in a debate that I had with him. He thinks the earth is concave and he also thinks he's Jesus. Um, check that one out. Uh, with Sam Owen, he's doing the fill-in space comma when we get to it. So about a plan. 
flying against the direction of the so-called Earth. Space, come on. A plane flies 500 mph while the Earth spins over 1,000. Do the math. Space, come on. Or the clouds as well wouldn't stand still whilst the Earth is spinning that fast. Space, come on. Conservation momentum is taught to elementary school children sometime around fourth grade. Apparently, John missed that day and every day since. Dennis Pierce wants to know who paid me. Well, since I write email filtering software, my employer pays me. I also get a little bit of money from YouTube. It's pretty nice for a hobby. When I was a kid, though, the old couple down the street would pay me every week to mow their lawn. Three dollars. Do you know how many pop rocks you can get with that? Ridge Ox says cats looks well different with hair. Well, thanks. I'm glad you noticed. Now, as part of this new channel, NASA sent and actually installed a shed in the backyard. I didn't know why they didn't tell me I didn't get the memo. So I went and checked it out. I heard some noises. Hello? Bring it towards uh, a central point. Or Hello? Invisible tentacles that go around the back oh. of objects, applying a pressure, Scared bringing it here. towards a central point. Hello? Chop, chop, run along. Yeah. It's nonsensical, hey. absolute. Running along. Yeah, apparently I have to take care of Shed Rage High now. Well, it explains the badger carcasses I saw in the yard the other night. <laughs> yeah, so apparently Dell will be featured more in these videos. Awesome. So I have one more clip from Dare Ick, and he's going to try to explain some science. So, you think the Michael Morley experiment disproved the ether, do you? Hold on a second, did he just say Michael Morley? It must have been a slip of the tongue. Alright, let's do that. So the Michael Morley experiment... He did say it wrong, twice. It's not Michael Morley, it's Michelson Morley. It's two people, Albert Michelson, Edward Morley. Clearly, he did not even read what he's about to try to explain. So the Michael Morley experiment was an experiment that set out to measure the drag of the ether here on Earth. They were going to do so by shooting a light at a mirror and measuring the drag of the ether in correspondence to the spin of the Earth. We are off to a bad start already. All right, he got one thing right. They were seeking to measure the drag of the ether. But uh, it wasn't one mirror. There were actually 16 mirrors. The light was split into two separate paths using a prism and then recombined afterwards. And it wasn't really about the uh, orb, the rotation of the Earth. It was more about the orbit of the Earth around the sun. Small thing, but uh, clearly he didn't even look at the diagram in the paper that he's trying to address. So what did they find when they did this experiment? They found that the light did not move, that it actually landed exactly where it should if we're not moving. And instead of them deciding to look into the fact that maybe we're not moving, they came up with a downright insane explanation for this. An explanation that if you believe it, you have to throw all your common sense out the window. So what is this explanation, you ask? They literally say that the reason why the light lands in the same spot as it would if we were not moving is because as we move, we dilate and contract as we move faster than a bullet through space. Oh, so many things that he gets wrong here. It's just painful. Uh, he said light did not move and then it landed where it should. That's not at all what was happening. It's a very uh, clear indication he didn't even look at the experiment he said there was one mirror there were 16 mirrors uh, two separate paths and then the light was recombined on this plate and if, and you could see an interference pattern if the light took a different amount of time to go one path versus the other he, <laughs> the reason why this particular experiment came up with the results it had isn't because of the the length contraction that he talked about i'll get to that later it's because light travels at the same rate in your reference frame, no matter how fast you are going. So if you're going in a car at a thousand miles an hour, and you turn on the headlights, the light doesn't go forward at the speed of light plus a thousand miles an hour. It goes forward at the speed of light. It's not intuitive, but it's a foundational part of the, uh, of relativity. And it's been thoroughly confirmed over the century since it was proposed. 
in the Michelson Gale experiment, Kennedy Thorndike, Ive Stillwell, Pound Repka, Havel Keating in the Scout Rocket experiment, and several others. I have a short list on my website, mc2.net slash relativity, that you can go look at them. And so, all right, so his, this, this length contraction thing he's talking about, that was actually an effort by Lorentz to keep Aether and uh, consistent with the results of Michelson-Morley. It was a hypothesis. Uh, it was eventually thrown out, Aether Michael, and, and, and the Lorentz contraction as explained in relation to Aether. Was all, all that was thrown out. We do find mm -hmm. Lorentz contraction showing up later in relativity, but that's a different thing. He's actually talking about Aether in this case. Let's see what he does to to uh, do away with a hundred years of experiments that have confirmed relativity. Yes, you heard me right. They think that as we travel through space, you are getting bigger and smaller as you move. And in doing so, things happen to land in the same spot that they would. This is the theory of relativity, and it is a theory. You're right, relativity is a theory, and in case you're curious there, Dare Ick, a theory is the highest level of explanation in science. Some features of a scientific theory are that they have been thoroughly tested over an extended period. They provide accurate explanations and predictions for a wide range of phenomena, are widely accepted by the scientific community, and demonstrate strong experimental and observational support. So yes, relativity is a theory because it is confirmed and has been confirmed over a century. So what do you think about this theory? A bull crap theory, if you ask me. Nobody's asking you. But nevertheless, you got people who believe it. So because they came up with an idea that you are changing size every second, people think that that disproved the ether, even though they didn't do a single experiment to prove this. Nope. What do you mean they didn't do any other experiments? Are you research phobic? I thought flat earthers were always doing their own research. All right, there is the Michelson-Gale experiment, the Kennedy-Thorndike experiment, I have Stillwell, Pound Rebka, Havel Keating, the Scout Rocket experiment. I went over these already. They're on my website, mc 29 slash relativity. I, I, these flat earthers never do anything but parrot their Papa Flurfs. They did an experiment that disproved the motion of the Earth, and then they twisted it and perverted it like everything else on Earth to fit their model. They literally threw out the ether that they knew existed when they started this experiment because they were doing the experiment to measure the ether and because Nikola Tesla had made inventions that worked off of the ether. I love when flat earthers bring up Tesla. They just have no idea. Tesla did not invent anything that used the ether. He transmitted electricity through the air. Never worked very well because you tend to get lightning, which is kind of dangerous. But it was just electricity, not ether. And also, Tesla doesn't really support you much either, there, Flat Earthers. From the 1915 American New York American Journal, he published this article that said, Accepting all this is true, let us consider some of the forces and influences which act on such a wonderfully complex automatic engine with organs inconceivably sensitive and delicate as it carries us by the spinning terrestrial globe in lightning flight through space. So no, that doesn't really work very well for you. Oops. They were well aware that the ether was there, but what they weren't, is they weren't capable of letting go of their ego. Like many people, they just couldn't admit they were wrong. So instead, they came up with this bullcrap theory that we are literally expanding and shrinking as we go through time. There it is, one century of empirical research debunked by a guy that didn't even read a paper. What do you think of that, Dell? It's nonsensical, absolute drivel. <laughs> I like this guy. Anyway, uh, I debate flat earthers every week on my other channel, MC Tune Live. I invited Dare Ick to debate me, he ran away, but I'll have somebody this next Tuesday uh, anyway. Uh, thanks especially to Mr. Katz, who gave me this channel, and also gave a second channel to Mr. Sensible. Both of the links are in the description. Uh, we'll see you next time.